left two of them, boys. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another Turner Fishing video. So in today's video, we're going to be covering how you can go behind anybody on the lake. You can go behind old Jimbo, Bob, Russell, whatever. They're fishing your favorite spots, and then they leave. You're going to pull right up on there and do what I'm about to talk about in this video and outcatch them, put more limits in your boat this year. Stay tuned. All right, before we dive right in, I'm going to announce the giveaway winner from the last video. So I'm going to pick a random person. It should be on the screen right now. So if your name popped up, shoot me a message on Facebook, Instagram, somewhere. Find me somewhere. Send me your address and what color you want for the 50-pack. And at the start of this video, since we had a really, really crazy comments on the last video, like double the amount of comments that I normally get, I'm going to be doing another giveaway in this video. So another chance for another 50 pack or whatever kind of crappy man jigs you want. Leave a comment down below, like the video, and share it to all your buddies. And you'll be entered for a chance to win. A uh, make scenario where, you know, the night before, days before, we just got it in our head. Hey, I'm going to go fish this dock. I'm going to go fish this brush pile. I'm going to go fish this bridge. But, lo and behold, somebody else has it in their head, too. And when you get to the lake, you take off, you drive to your favorite brush pile, your favorite dock, whatever, and there's somebody sitting on it. Now, don't get me wrong, that doesn't really tee me off. I got, you know, hundreds and hundreds of brush piles on my local body of water that I can go check and make sure there's fish, but some brush piles are better than none, and everybody knows that. So what do you do? The best advice I can give you is just wait till they leave, and then go fish behind them. But... They've already, you know, ran their trolling motor all over this brush pile. They've already hung the brush pile. They've already thrown every color and the kitchen sink in there. How do you get them to bite after they leave? So at the end of this video, I'm actually going to play some clips that showcase me and the crappy man fishing behind somebody. Now, the guys fishing, I don't know their name, but when we were putting the boat in, they came out of Big Man's Marina They've already bought some of our jigs in there. So I kind of, in my head, knew what they were using. So it kind of gave us a little bit of an advantage. And also the fact that this is my favorite dock on the lake. And I'm really, really good at fishing it without electronics. So I knew I could get them to bite. But let's go over what you need to do when you pull up to a place that somebody else has fished. First off, even though somebody's sitting there for you know, an hour or two, you need to either scan it or use, a, use your live scope to see if there's any fish there. Now, if you don't have electronics, that's perfectly fine. I haven't been using electronics for the past three weeks, and I have honestly been crushing them, except for that uh, tournament video, but that was a couple weeks ago. And it's, it's, just, it's really the same deal. Like, the electronics make things faster. Like, if you have side scan, you know if the fish are there. If you have down scan, you know the fish are there. If you have 2D sonar, you can ride over it and you can tell if there's fish on the brush pile. And that just saves you time from stopping the boat, doing the trolling motor, getting your rod ready, and fishing it. So, you check the brush pile, there's fish on it, but it's been pressured. The other guy might have caught a whole limit off this brush pile. He might have caught one. He might have caught four or five. You don't know. Because, I mean, you're not sitting there with binoculars looking at them. I mean, by all means, do that. But that's kind of kind of weird. But. <laughs> so, you get out there. Now, the first tip I'm going to give you. This is tip number one. Does your lake have current? Is there any type of current coming from a creek, a river, uh, just uh, rain, uh pulling water, just anything to make your jig do something different. That's what you want to check first. Now, if your lake does have these conditions, there's so many possibilities for a single brush pile or a single dock that you could do. You take this dock, for instance, right here that we're fishing behind these people. Uh, as you can see, the crappy man is fishing the front of the dock where there's four or five brush piles. 
and I'm fishing the back of the dock where there, there's not really much brush piles, but I know that, you know, the bigger crappie tend to hang outside the brush and not inside the brush. So I try to target under the dock here. I can also target under this platform here, and I can also target the, these rocks here. The dock that I'm fishing is sitting in 25 feet of water, and it has it is on a huge ledge. So I'm able to throw towards the bank and actually fish the depth that I want to fish and, and present the jig coming from a totally different angle that not a lot of people will use. So that is tip number two. You want to target angles that not a lot of people are going to use. This dock, for instance, I can shoot my jig way to the other side under this platform and it's going to come by a fish that wasn't touched. I can also drop the jig right beside the boat as deep as I think they are and it's going to go straight past them and nobody else has done that because they've cast it and let it come to them. But dropping it beside the boat with the current, it's going to push the jig towards the fish and they're not, they haven't had that done today. That, you know, in my head I think the other people may have done that. I can also... There's, you know, I could change the angle every 20 degrees and make a cast and put different depths on every cast until I locate a cast that works. And then as I taught you in a, a previous video in beginner crappy course, repeat the cast that you get bit on. And that's how you put limits in the boat. You repeat the cast that you got to bite. Always try to remember in your head you know, I threw it this far. I let out this much line. You know, the, the jig's falling this far, etc. It's just something to note. Now, tip number three. Now, this is a big one, a big key to finding them without electronics. So, I'm going to kind of go over this kind of in depth. So, y'all stay tuned. Make sure you're, you're, you're thumping that like button for me. And be sure to be subscribed to the channel. So, this next tip, I'm going to... Try to demonstrate with a rod. You're not really going to be able to see my head. So you're, you're at the dock. You know, you're going to do your initial cast. You're going to let it come back to the boat. Your finger on the line. Because the finger on the line, I can feel the crappy breathe on my jig. And I can tell what's the brush and what's the bite. That's the, main, the, the number one reason for the finger on the line. You don't have to do it, but, you know... I, I suggest you do it. So you, you've waited long enough. It's pendulum back to the boat. And you're sitting there. And you're jigging it. Okay, you don't have electronics. You don't know what depth they're at. Take your bell. Let out a foot. Jig it. 20, 30 seconds. Make sure you cover your bases. Let out another foot let out another foot when you repeat this process until you get home and eventually you're going to let out enough line to get in the right strike zone at the right angle and man you can have 20 fish in the boat and going home all right that's pretty much what i just explained you know how i'm gonna even well even on a brush pile or a bridge you take your bell and just let out a little bit of line at a time until you get a bite and just remember what you did. Repeat the cast. I should put that on a shirt. Repeat the cast. Catch limits. Steven Turner. <laughs> but you, you go out there, you know, for tip number five, I think this is number five. I, I don't even know. The next tip, the final tip really, is I knew what they were using. So, like, I knew they were using our jigs. I, I honestly don't know what kind of jig they were using, but I kind of figured it was a little minnow. So when I pulled up to the jig, my first instinct is to put on a little stinker because my rule of thumb, unless I'm using live scope to target uh, open water fish, if I'm fishing without electronics, I want to hit these schools with a little minnow. Catch as many as I can with a little minnow until mentally you get a gut feeling I need to switch or I need to leave. And everybody's got this gut feeling. It's just in your head. You know, like, 
they're just not biting, let's go. Or, ugh, this are, they're just not biting, let me change the color like four or five times and see. But mentally, when I pulled up to this dock, I wanted the little stinker crappy man green on because it's a downsize to the little minnow and I'm able to be different than the person that was on the dock before me. <clears throat> now y'all got to think, y'all watch my channel, we use finesse jigs. That is our number one seller, that is our number one confidence bait is small 1.5 inch jigs. Now why does this work so well for going behind people and catching limits? Because everybody and their mother, 70%, 80%, 90% of crappy fishermen are using 2 inch bobby garlands, 2 inch strike kings, 2 inch this, 2.5 inch this. And when you pull up behind them and throw something that them fish haven't seen, and especially if you throw it in crappy man green, whew, it's going to go thump. And you just load up. Crappy Man, the name Crappy Man originates from my daddy pulling up to bridges that is just loaded with people. Nobody's catching anything. He pulls up, fires it out there. Five or six people are leaving because he's over there drag squealing every cast. And that's where he gets the name Crappy Man. And even to this day, if they're biting on bridges or even on the dock, like in the video we're showing, the people that we were watching caught four or five, and then they left, and we went from the dock that we were fishing over there at, right after they left, and it was like almost every cast that we were getting a bite. And we stopped catching them to go home because we've had enough to eat. But anyway, guys, I'm just wanted to show y'all that. And please pay close attention to the fishing clips behind this. As I'm doing everything that I've tried to teach in this video and throughout the video. But I hope y'all get out on the water. Make sure to order some jigs at CrappyManJigs.com. Left two of them, boys. Nice and Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. 
Nothing gigantic, but eat some fish. All right. They bite it. They be all right. Ain't you bite it? Just putting it in your mouth. a little nippy out here so we're gonna head to the house but hello oh, just goes to show you, you can fish behind people and as long as you use the right angles the right depth and you just take your time and figure it out as long as you know the fish are there and it's worth fishing you can end up with a pretty good mess so hope you enjoyed today's video make sure you hit the thumbs up button for me and i'll catch you on the next one